Hello, welcome. I'm Vicky Foster. I'm a writer. I'm currently at home, like most of us are at the moment, and I'm in my little office at the top of my house, which is where I spend a lot of my time. It's where all my writing gets done. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I write poetry, plays and prose. Uh, my first collection of poetry was published in 2016. It's called Changing Tads and here it is. Uh, I also wrote a play in 2018 which was originally commissioned by the BBC as a Radio 4 afternoon play but is now also a book that's called Bathwater. Um, yeah and I write a lot of commissions as well and a lot of my commissions tend to focus on place which is amazing for me because place is one of my favourite things to write about. And place is actually going to be the focus of this tutorial. So I won't talk too much about that just now because I'll tell you more about that later on. Um, I'm also a writer in residence for First Story. I'm currently in my second year working with a school called Mallet Lambert in Hull, which has been just brilliant. The young people there have been amazing. Uh, this is the anthology that we wrote last year, along with Jo Hakeem, who was also a writer in residence there last year. We did that together. And I'm just putting together the finishing touches to this year's anthology, which is going to be just beautiful. And that'll be out later this year. Uh, Mallet Lambert was also my old school. So it's been great going back there and being able to discuss with the pupils, like what their experience of that place has been compared to man. So there we are. That's a bit about me. Um, this video is part of a series of tutorials that First Story are putting online in the run up to National Writing Day, which is on the 24th of June. And um, as we go along, I'll be writing with you. I'll be doing my own writing exercises. And it would be amazing if you wanted to share some of the things you write online, which you can do by taking a picture of what you write, using the hashtag write from home, and you can share it with Fair Story on Twitter at Fair Story and on Instagram at FS Books. So that would be just brilliant to see what you're writing as we go along. So as I mentioned earlier, what we're going to focus on is place. But one of the most interesting things for me about place is how it connects people. So I'm going to give you a few examples of that. So you might have noticed by now that I've got a particular kind of accent. I've got a whole accent and most of us will grow up um, speaking with the accent that surrounds us. So usually that's the place where we live. So, for example, if I go somewhere else in the world and I hear someone else speaking with a whole accent, I immediately feel a connection with that person. And I know that if I was to strike up a conversation with them, we'd have some shared experiences. We'd know the same landmarks. We'd know about events that happen at the same time every year in the, in the same place. So that's one example of the way that place can connect us. Another example is things like souvenirs. Like this is quite an obvious one that I bought in a shop. I bought it in Paris when I went there for the first time last year. If I was to visit someone else's house and they had a souvenir from Paris, again, I'd have like an immediate connection with them because we'll both have experienced that place, we'll both have stories to share about it and there'll be a common connection. Uh, I'm going to give you one last example of a way in which place connects people. And I've lived in Hull all my life. My parents have lived in Hull all of their lives. My grandparents did and my great-grandparents did. Um, and I did know my great-grandparents when I was really small, but don't really remember them very well. But I do know stories about things that happened in places in Hull. And now when I visit those places, I kind of associate them with those members of my family that I didn't really know. And so I can form a connection with people that mean something to me, but who I didn't really know. So, these are some examples. Now, we're going to write um, today for about 45 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that. And we're going to start off really slowly and 
build up to a bigger poem at the end. So the final poem is going to be about place. But to start with, we're going to start off writing about people because we're going to link those two things together. So what we're going to do, first of all, is I just want you to get a piece of paper and a pen. Hopefully you've got those handy. You can always pause me if you haven't. That's the good thing about these videos. And what I want you to do is focus on one particular person for this writing exercise. So somebody who you really like, um, which will become apparent why it has to be somebody you really like as we move along through the exercises. And preferably someone who you haven't seen for a while because of lockdown. I'm gonna choose my friend Kath, because I've not seen her for ages. Um, and then what I want you to do is just write their name at the top and then down the side of the page, just write numbers one to five. I'm sharing my scruffy handwriting with you. It's a good job you can't see my desk. I position the camera strategically so you can't see all my papers and books strewn about. Um, so yeah, numbers one to five. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna write five words or short phrases that uh, we associate with this person or that describe them. And you don't have to think too long about it. And these words can be anything. But I would suggest for the first two that number one, we include an object as one of these words or phrases. The reason for that is that I think objects can be brilliant ways of describing people or telling us something about a person. Uh, when I was writing Bathwater, the poet and playwright Louise Walwyn showed me a brilliant writing exercise where you imagine a person as an object. And at the time, I was writing about the son character in my play. And my son, before he was born, I bought him a blue fleecy blanket. And he's had it all his life, like as he got older, it was at the bottom of his bed and then it was chucked in a corner of his bedroom and now I think it's in the loft. But it was just something that I associated with him because he'd always had it. And then as I started writing about it, I realised that actually a fleecy blanket is a really good metaphor for that mother-son relationship. And so sometimes we think we're choosing an object randomly and then when we write about it a little bit, we realise actually it's got a lot of associations we might not have realised were there in the first place. Don't think too hard about it though. Just, you can pick anything, like you might be used to seeing this person with a battered old satchel, or they might always have really bright white trainers, or a tarnished silver necklace, or a lucky coin. Anything that you think of that you associate with that person, but an object. And for the second word or phrase, I would suggest using something sensory. So any of the senses could be something about what they look like, what the hands feel like, if they've got really soft hands or really chapped hands. A lot of us have got chapped hands at the moment. Uh, or I think taste is a really good one for people that we love. Um, mainly because we tend to eat, or I tend to eat, <laughs> with people that I really like. So for example, if I was gonna write about my mum, I might pick Yorkshire puddings and gravy because she always cooks us Sunday dinners. And smell can be a really good one as well uh, for people because smells really evocative, like a certain smell. Have you ever noticed how it can take you straight back to a moment in time that's sometimes from years before? And certain people have certain smells associated with them. So again, that might be cooking or it might be mud. If it's a person who plays a lot of field sports like football or rugby, you might be used to going to watch them. You might be used to that smell of mud and grass in the air. Things like that. Think about these things. So one object, one sensory detail. The other three can be whatever you like them to be. Uh, but yeah, five words or short phrases. And we're not going to take a long time to do this. I'm going to time it and I'm going to do it along with you when we start. So we are just going to take one minute starting from now.
10 seconds left. There you go, time's up. So hopefully you managed to write five words or phrases about this person. Uh, I'll tell you what I've got, I'll show you my scruffy writing. Um, I've got a pen, that was my object, because uh, we were at university together and Kath likes to write. The smell of coffee, because, you know, we'd often go for a coffee together. Yoga, she loves yoga. A cat called Dave, because she's got a cat called Dave and she tells us stories about him. And swimming, because we were always talking about going free swimming together, but she's a bit braver than me. She goes and I've only been once. So, whatever reason you've picked those words for, that's absolutely fine, but hopefully you've got five. If you want to change them up a bit now, you've still got a chance. Um, and what we're going to do next is for each of those five words or phrases, we're going to write one line. So in five minutes, we're going to give ourselves five minutes to do it. And in those five minutes, you'll write a five line poem. So you can make it really easy or simple for yourself if you like and you can just start each line with he is or she is or they are and then your word, your object or your smell. So for example, man might say she is a pen, she is the smell of coffee, she is yoga and carry on like that for five lines and that's absolutely fine if you want to do it like that, that'll be great. If you don't want to do it like that and you want to do something a bit different then that's absolutely fine as well but just try and include these five words or phrases that you've already written down about the person if you're feeling really inspired and you want to write a longer poem that's absolutely fine as well so you just do whatever you want to do now with these five words and we're just going to take five minutes to do it starting from now So we're about halfway through now.
got one minute left. there we go time's up so if you just want to finish up what you're writing hopefully you enjoyed that and you've got something really good out of it whatever you write is always right it can't be wrong um, and always when you're writing these kinds of poems what you're doing is you're sharing details about your life and about your friends lives and that's a really important thing so don't ever worry that what you're writing is not good enough or in some way not interesting. It's all interesting. All these details are interesting. So if you'd like to share what you've written again on Instagram at FS Books or um, on Twitter at Fair Story, use the hashtag write from home. It'd be amazing to see what you've written. I'm going to share what I've written. Here we go. A very quick poem it's about my friend Kath. She is a flowing ink at the tip of a ballpoint pen. She carries the scent of hot coffee in her wake. She can bend into the most complicated yoga poses to help a friend or juggle all the things she's got to do. And all the while, she'd be balancing a cat called Dave on her head. After all that, she writes, free and focused, the whole world swimming, at her fingertips. So there you go. It'd be lovely to see what you've written if you want to share it. And that was our warm up exercise. So hopefully you're feeling like you've got your writing muscles warmed up a bit now. <laughs> We're gonna move on to a slightly longer exercise this time, but still I'm gonna take you through it step by step. Um, this time, we're still not quite gonna focus on place yet, but you'll see why later on. This time we're going to write about the time of day um, and what we're going to write about is your favourite time of day and in particular your favourite time of day during lockdown. So that might have really changed like for me my favourite time of day definitely used to be the evenings when I'd done all my work, any housework or admin that I had to do was finished and I could go out and meet friends and go to events and stuff like that. Obviously, a lot of that stuff's not happening at the moment. And what I've discovered is, having never been a morning person in the past, that getting up early before everybody else has suddenly become like my favourite thing. That's my favourite time of day. So I like to go downstairs, open all the blinds and curtains. And I'm lucky that where I live, there's lots of trees outside. So I like to sit in the window for a while with my journal and just do some writing and have some quiet time. So that's my favourite time of day at the moment, quite a calming time. For you, it might be different. Um, whatever, have a little think about it and whatever springs to mind and you think that's your favourite time of day under lockdown, then choose that. So write the time of day at the top of the page. I'm gonna write morning. And then again, we'll start off in the same way because it's quite a good way to start. Numbers one to five down the side of the page. And I just want you to quickly write, I'll time it again, we'll have one minute. Quickly write five words about that time of day. Try and include an object and a sensory detail again if you can.
there you go that's one minute hopefully you got on okay with that i'll tell you what my five words are they are green birds light jogger because i'll often see a jogger running past and um, when i'm sitting there i'm being lazy they're being energetic and blinds because i really like opening the blinds so that was the first part of this writing exercise but before we move on to actually writing a poem we're going to do some more things this time so we're going to build on that a little bit so that when we come to write the poem we've got lots of stuff to choose from and um, so next i'm going to ask you a series of questions and they're a bit abstract but don't worry too much about it so um just write down the first thing that pops into your head and like I say, don't worry too much about why you're choosing that thing because the questions are a bit unusual. So we're just going to do that now. We'll work through it. So the first question is, what colour is your favourite time of day? Some of you might have already written a colour, actually, because I have. I've written green. So, but even if you have or if you haven't, you can write it again. What colour is it? I might go for green and brown actually, because there's a lot of trees. Um, next question, what shape is a time of day? So if you had to describe it as a shape, what would it be? I'm gonna go for star shaped. Um, what does this time of day smell like? It could be something that you actually smell that's there physically um, or it could just be something you imagine it might smell like. I'm going to go for coffee and chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is that what you smell when you crush leaves or grass and stuff. And I can see a lot of leaves and grass and stuff from my window. So, what does this time of day feel like? I've got hopeful, peaceful and uplifting. What does it taste like? So again, it might be something that you're actually tasting at that time of day. You might have picked tea time. So pick whatever your favourite thing is that you have for your tea sometimes and write that down. So here's another one that's a bit trickier, but again, don't worry too much about it. If you could hold this time of day in the palm of your hand, and give it a little squeeze, what sound would it make? Give you a little bit longer to think about that one. I've got the man would sound like a sigh. So, one last question. If this time of day had a voice, if it could speak to you, what would its voice sound like? And think about things like, is it quiet or loud? Does it speak fast or slow? Does it um, speak with an accent? Is its accent the same as yours? Uh, things like that. Can you understand everything it says to you or other bits of it you can't understand? So just take a little bit of time to answer that question. Hopefully you've been able to come up with something there. Now it's a bit of a strange question. So I've got that my morning would speak with a quiet voice. It speaks clearly, but there's a whispered echo that I can't quite hear. So there you go. So we've got quite a lot of things that we can tap into now to write this next poem. 
and what I want you to do is because we've got a bit more information this time you don't have to use all of it and um, you can just pick which bits and pieces you want to use so you've got a page full of stuff about your morning there prompts and starting points and I'm just going to give you five minutes again I think to write something down starting from now about halfway through now. Got one minute left.
And there we go, that's your five minutes. So uh, if you just want to finish up what you're writing, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and found it useful. I think um, that writing about people we can't see and writing about lockdown is actually, you know, it might be a bit emotional, but I think it's really helpful to write about things that are troubling us a bit sometimes. Um, I've just knocked something over down here, but we're okay, it's not a disaster. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it can be really helpful to write about the things that are troubling you. I think my experience of dealing with difficult things has sometimes been that I don't want to think about it all of the time. Um, I want to be able to put it down for a while while I get on with my life and get on with my day. And I think that writing is a brilliant way to do that. So if you're struggling with where to put a difficult thing while you do get on with your life, well, you can put it on paper and actually that has the effect of lifting it out of your mind and off your shoulders for a little while. So I think it's a really useful thing to do and hopefully you're finding that using these writing exercises. And I think that by asking unusual questions like what does the morning's voice sound like, it can kind of shortcut your thinking sometimes and tell you something, um, like uncover something that you might not have realised yourself you were feeling before. So that's part of the reason for these strange questions. Um, so I'm going to share with you what I've written. Hopefully you've written something, maybe even uncovered something or put something down for a bit. And before I read you my poem, I'm going to read you a poem that also happens to be about the morning. And it's a bit of an exclusive because it's going to be in the next Mallet anthology that hasn't been published yet. So it's by a young man called Matt Bays, who was in my... Um, First story class at Mallet Lambert this year. It's called Morning. The morning comes with frosted panes. Cold veils block the view of the world, still melting. That icy cloth never wipes away. We stand before it, carve sentiments in the dew, only to frost them once more. A strange melancholy it brings. Now the scarlet flame rises, grows yellow and clears the mist from our windows. We get on with our day. And I really like that because I think that kind of touches on what I was saying just now about putting things down and being able to get on with your day, like about carving sentiments in the dew. That's kind of like the, this idea of writing something down and getting it off your chest so that you can get on with the day. I think one of the really good things about writing is that just by the act of writing about something, you're taking time to focus your attention on it. And often when we're busy, we don't do that. And often when we do take the time to do that and write about it, it can make a real difference in our lives, I think. So I'll share with you my poem that I wrote in those five minutes. Mine's called Morning as well, and it goes like this. The morning is green. Its edges flutter with feather-edged wings that throw up the scent of coffee and chlorophyll and scatter toast crumbs in the freshly cut grass. Held in my palm, it sighs and speaks to me clearly of its plans and hopes. But there's a whispered echo caught somewhere between the tops of the branches and the wind that never quite reaches my ears. So there you go. I'm writing along with you. And I hope that you're going to share some things that you've written. Again, Twitter, at Fair Story, Instagram, at FS Books. Take a picture of what you've written. Use the hashtag Write From Home, which is National Writing Day's um, tag and prompt for this year be amazing to see what you've written and now finally we've come to our final writing exercise which really does focus on place now hopefully it'll become clear to you why we've um done these other two writing exercises first because i talked earlier on about the association between people and places and now that we've written these other two poems, what we're going to do is we're going to pinch from them a bit. It's a good tool for writers to be a bit like a magpie. Like sometimes I might write a poem that I don't really like. I don't like the whole thing, but there's a line in it 
that I can pick out and use somewhere else. Or like when I was writing Bathwater, the play, I had really strict scenes and a really strict structure. And sometimes I'd write a scene and think that's not really working. And I'd physically get scissors and cut it up and put bits of it as there was words and phrases or ideas that I liked, but they were just in the wrong place. So I'd chop it up with scissors and then stick it into another scene with sellotape. Made a nice mess on my dining room floor. Um, but yeah, it's good to pinch things you've written from other places where they aren't really working and put them in to something else. So that's what we're going to do here in this final poem. So what we're going to do is we're going to write three stanzas. But before I start, I want to share with you a poem by my friend... Dean Wilson, my friend and also one of my favourite poets and he writes about place a lot and one of the things that Dean does in this poem and one of the reasons that we've written about the time of day is he imagines a place at two different times of day. So it's a beautiful poem, I'm going to read you it, it's called Metal Box. Meet me in the long grass by what's left of the factory where our mothers worked, and I will count the freckles on your back. Then later, when you're gone, I'll see how far I get with the stars. I love that poem so much. So, Dean is talking about um, meeting someone in a place and what they might do when they get there. And then he's imagining what he might do on his own later on after that person's gone. Um, so aside from being a beautiful poem, Dean's actually doing some of the things there that we're going to do in this poem. And what we're going to do is we're going to think about a favourite place that you have visited in the past with the person that you wrote about in the first writing exercise. So I wrote about my friend Kath. So I need to pick a place that me and her visited um, before lockdown and social distancing started, a place that we visited together. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of time to think about that. Where might that be for you? Hopefully you've come up with somewhere. I've got um, Skipsy Sands. That's a place where me and Kath went swimming in the sea. Um, back in, must have been last May, I think. That's relevant. Write down, just approximately, it might be that you can remember the month, but not the year. It might be that you know the specific date. It might be that yeah, you just know what year it was, any detail about when it was, because we'll use that at the start of the poem. So, I went to Skipsy Sands, swimming in the sea last May with Kath. Hopefully you've come up with a scenario that works for you and the person you wrote about. Now, what I want you to do is just write down some details. You already know from the two exercises we've already done that sensory things are good, um, that objects are good if you can remember an object and um, also now because we're speaking specifically about places you might remember somebody who you just happened to bump into that day who you don't really know or somebody who was there and um, anything like that that can remember if you remember anything about feelings and um, write about those and um, yeah anything you can remember about that last time that you visited and I'm just gonna tie me for this because it's easy to get caught up in it and really we just want to get on and write this final poem so one minute to write down some details
There we go, that's one minute. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write the first part of this poem. This poem's going to be written in three parts and we're going to visit the same place or imagine visiting the same place three times. So the first time is a real time. It's the time you went there last with this person. So I'm just going to give you five minutes, I think, to write this last, uh, this first stanza. So here is where we can be magpies. You've got details about this place that you've just written down, but you've also got the details from your first poem about that person. So if you want to pinch any of those things from your first poem or any of the details that you wrote down and reuse them, that's absolutely great. So you've got, actually, we're not going to have five minutes. I think we'll have three minutes to write the first stanza of this poem starting now. there we go your three minutes are up uh, i'm not going to share with you what i've written just now because that was just the first part of the poem we're going to carry straight on to the next part of the poem so we've written about a place that you actually visited with this person an actual real visit the second part of the poem is we're going to um, think about what that place might be like during lockdown so for this part, this stanza of the poem, what you might want to do is include something about what it's like where you are. So you might want to start this stanza with, it's May 2019 and I'm locked down at home. 
here again be a magpie you can pinch some things from that poem that you wrote about the time of day earlier on and include them here and um, to tell us where you are now and then what i want you to do is imagine what it would be like in the place that you visited before under lockdown a lot of places are really different now Skipsy Sands might not be that different under lockdown uh, to what it was the day I visited because it was quite deserted. So I can write about that. But if, for example, um, you have written in the first part of the poem about visiting uh, an arcade or a restaurant or um, a park, those places might be really different now. Obviously, restaurants and arcades and cinemas and stuff like that are all closed. Uh, what will it be like when it's closed? What's different about it? Obviously, there's no people there, but what else might be going on? Like, there's a lot of stories popping up on social media about animals visiting places where now that people aren't there anymore. So use your imagination. Use the stuff you know about the place. You know about location. You know about if there are any particular smells in the air from factories. If it's a cinema, it might still smell of popcorn. Think about these things. We're not going to write for a long time. We're just going to write for three minutes again. So include something. Start again with the month. So your first stanza would have started like my start. Mine starts with Skipsy Sands in May 2019. I didn't put 2019, but I will because it's May now and that's going to get confusing. So start with the time now, May 2020. It's the morning or whatever time of day you're writing about. A few details about where you are, what it's like, pinch them from the last exercise. And then just a few lines, imagining what it's like um, in your other location under lockdown. We're going to start and just write for three minutes, starting now. Thirty seconds left.
there we go time's up so finish up what you've been writing that was a bit emotional for me writing about um what it might be like there now and how I can't go um, but again like I said earlier I think it's good to have an outlet writing's a brilliant outlet for emotional things um, right we're going to write the last stanza of this poem and then I'll show you what I've written share it with you and hopefully you'll share yours with me on social media for the last stanza of this poem I want you to imagine what it might be like next time you visit this place now you might want to just think about going again with this one particular person or you might want to imagine that everybody you haven't been able to see during lockdown will be there the choice is yours and I think you know how it works by now. Think of some sensory details, think of some objects, think about all these things that we used in the previous writing exercises and just write a short stanza for this, la for this poem, the last part of this poem um, about what it'll be like next time you go there. So let your imagination run wild with this one, whatever you need to get out of your system whoever you want to see, what you're going to do, it might be a feast on the sand, it might be that everybody you've ever met is going to pile into the cinema to watch a film, however you want to imagine it, whatever that, um, wherever that takes you, just write the final stanza of this poem in this place and who's going to be there. I've got three minutes again, starting from now. Oh, and also include what time of year you think it might be. So maybe start with like October 2020. And there we go, your final three minutes are up. So hopefully now you've got a three stanza poem that revisits the same place at three different times. I really enjoyed that. It's so nice to be writing um, along with you. I 
I'm going to share with you what I've written and yeah and then we've more or less finished for today so I'm going to read you what I've written if you haven't quite finished yet and you've got more to say you can just pause me <laughs> that's the beauty of uh, a tutorial that works in this way just pause me and carry on what you're doing that's absolutely fine um, I'm going to share with you what I've written and it goes like this Skipsy Sands in May 2019 and us swimming in the freezing wind, towels threatening to lift and carry in the breeze and shoes anchoring them. I lost my breath, nearly lost my nerve but you strode out unafraid and afterwards hot coffee warming us. We laughed about that lone walker who witnessed my frenzied goosebump dash across the sand. May 2020 I'm locked down at home, the green morning sighing in my palm. A lone jogger makes his way past my window and toast crumbs spill into my coffee. And I wonder about that lone walker on Skipsy Sands. Can he still visit now? Does he miss other visitors who visit his lonely beach? Is it windy today or is the sand warmed sun missing our feet? Skipsy, May 2021. We will build a fire in the sand and into it we will throw face masks and click and collect receipts and we will poke long sticks topped with marshmallows and let them melt against our lips and chins. And there will be no lone walkers. Everyone in ones and twos and fives and sixes, all of us anchored to the sand by each other's shoes. There you are. So anybody can write anything, even in a little amount of time. I really hope that you've enjoyed uh, writing with me today. I've really enjoyed it. And I hope that I get to see some of what you've written. Again, you can share it with the hashtag right from home. Take a picture of it, post it on Instagram at FSBooks or on Twitter at Fairstory. And yeah, thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing it. Thanks.